You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. All right. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. This is Christian Speak Talk Radio. I'm your host, Reverend Ray, broadcasting on Friday Night Joy. I tell you, man, the Friday, last Friday of the month of May. Wow. Time this year is going by pretty fast, man. But um, we bless God to be in the land of the living and to be able to to share some different things with you. We're going to do that today. We're going to continue on with a series that we've been working on amen, called uh, Lay Hold on Eternal Life. So this will be part two, amen. Um, yeah, this will be part two in the series. So we're going to go ahead and say prayer. Then we're going to probably in the middle of it, take a break or whatever, just to do some things different, amen. Why don't you pray for the broadcast? I'm having some difficulty with my mic. Uh, so if, start, if they're static, it, it does stop, but I probably got to order another mic and um, some other things and everything like that. But just continue to listen, especially last week on Friday when we were talking. There was a lot of good and great things that came out that the Lord had revealed, um, not only to me, but for you too. So go back and listen to Friday's broadcast. Amen. Um, Also, um, I want to let you know that Reverend Pat, man, and um, is doing a series right now that is off the chain. It's really, really good. Amen. And it's called God in a Box on her show called Declaring and Finished Work with Reverend Pat. Amen. So I want you to care to go back and listen to that. Um, um, Pastor Paul Morgan is doing part five of Should I? Amen. I got a chance to listen to some of it when I went to his church on Sunday. Amen. They forget the Monday after, night this Monday. Um, but the, the next Monday after that, next this Monday coming, of course, Apostle Shirley Jones will be with us. Amen. And tomorrow's supposed to be Alabaster Box. Amen. But uh, we'll, we'll see. I haven't heard from Apostle, Apostle um, Carla, but we'll find out what's going on. And for now, we'll, we'll do something. Amen. we get to just play some songs. I don't know yet. Amen. But um, I, like I said, I didn't want to do the announcement. Let's go ahead and have prayer. Father God, we just want to come and thank you for today. Thank you for all that you're doing in our life. Thank you for the move of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your understanding. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins, Lord, for giving us a second chance and a third chance and allowing us to be in the land and live. Thank you for eternal life, Lord Jesus. We do pray this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Like I said, last Friday we were talking about this. Is, uh, and I was coming from um, First Timothy um, verses, chapter 6, verse 12, where it says, fight the good fight of faith. And what Paul is talking to Timothy, lay hold on eternal life, where thou art also called. And has professed a good profession before many witnesses. And we were getting into that, the details of that, uh, that um, the, the, the body of Christ has gotten somewhat distracted. Amen. Um, from what, why we do what we do. Amen. We do because we love Jesus Christ, but we also do because we want to have um, eternal life, and that's what um, God offers us. Amen. And everything, and that's what Jesus is. He is the eternal life. Amen. Um, that if, um, and if we believe in in Him and trust Him and obey His commandments and um, His commandments and his statutes and stuff like that. So he is basically the eternal life. So, But here again, um, Paul is telling Timothy in verse 12 to fight the good fight. And I don't want to go back into a lot of the things that were said. I'm afraid to go back and listen to the broadcast. Amen. Um, because there was a lot of wording and a lot of blessings that, that's for you in that particular broadcast. Amen. Um, we're going to continue with that same um, thing, but one of the things I did when I was uh, trying to figure out how to tie or what I was talking about today, I wanted to find out 
about eternal life, okay? I wanted to know more about this eternal life and everything. And I'm going to um, read some scriptures. I got a lot of scriptures. And I'm going to change that real quick. All right. And then I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm, <laughs> I'm balancing um, several things, okay? Okay. All right. All right. There's a question. First, to understand eternal life. You got to understand what eternal life is. Uh, the answer is, when the Bible speaks of eternal life, it refers to a gift of God that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And this is coming out of Romans 6 and 23. Amen. Um, it's a gift. Eternal life is a gift. God don't owe it to us. He, you know, he didn't have to do it. You know, there was a choice that was made. Jesus made a decision, you know, <laughs> to die on a cross. Amen. So that it would be because he was obeying his father and because he wanted to do it too. He wanted us, y'all, to have eternal life. He wanted us to be in right relationship with, 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 with the father again. And, 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 and um, and it's amazing, you know, that he wanted us to spend more, be in relationship with the Father again. And I'm excited about that, man. It says, um, uh, share the meaning of a true and eternal life. You know, and a lot of people, I believe, I'm reading and talking at the same time, probably. But um, a lot of people probably don't really truly know the meaning of eternal life, you know. It's more than just doing something just to get to heaven, okay? It's about that relationship that you have with Jesus Christ, you know? It's about that intimacy that, don't, you know, the kingdom of God has touched. It's that spirit-to-spirit spirit type of thing that when God is dealing with you and speaking with you and you're in covenant with him, but more than that, he's in covenant to you, amen? Because he's the one that draw you, you know, and everything. So he's he's more doing that. And everything. Um, and John three and thirty six it says, "He that believe on the Son have everlasting life." So when we're talking about eternal life, we're talking about everlasting life. In other words, you're not you would no longer be separated from God. When man committed a sin, we were separated from God and everything because God can't deal with the sin, can't look upon sin. And a man that, that were born in sin will look on, on God, they will instantly die in the Old Testament because they represent the opposite of who God was. But John 3, 36 says, that he that believe in the Son have everlasting life, and he that believe in not, the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abided on him. He said the wrath of God abided on him, y'all. You know, if you don't believe in the sun, should not you should not see life. There's no there is no life in you if you don't believe in God. There's no life in you if you don't believe in the sun. You know, you know you're walking around um, dead in the sense of being spiritual and everything like that. But you walk around, you breathe, you eat, you do all those things, but you're spiritually dead. You know, um, he, he, even with this, and, and, and that's a probably a lot of that that take place in the churches when people are walking around dead in church. They don't have, they have no conception. They don't, uh, what's the word? They don't even have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They go or they take part of the church scene because this is what they think that they need to do to get into heaven. But and and of course, church is important because the Bible says should not forsake not the assembly of us to get coming together and everything like that, you know. But it has to be more than that, you know. It has to be a, a like I said before, a relationship, you know, with God, you know. And I'm not talking about an even relationship, but there has to be a worship. There has to be a reverence to God. See, sometimes we think of God as uh, that's our buddy. No, God is not our buddy. Mm-mm. He's Jesus said he's Jesus Christ said is our friend, you know. And, and the Bible said that God is our, the, 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 when he was talking about um, about God being our friend and everything like that. But he's not that that worldly. We put too much worldly um, emphasis on those things. But we have to get to a place where there's a reverence when we think about God. There's a reverence. He says in John three thirty six and sixteen again. He that believes on the Son have everlasting life. Have a everlasting life, and he that believe not the son shall not see light. So they won't even see light. You walking around dead and don't even know it. 
you know. And the worst thing to do in church is to be dead in a, in a church that's alive. Or worse than that, to have a church that's dead. <laughs> to be in a church that's all dead people walking around and stuff, going through the functions of church, but there's no life in it because they, the church in itself never really received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Or they have gone so far away, like the church in Israel has done, to a point where they're not even representing they not they have lost their first love, amen. I want to um, continue to read. I got because I got quite a few scriptures. Let's see where we're gonna go. Uh, I thought I changed this. I did. I know. Amen. Let's um. Let's go to John twenty eight. Amen. We're gonna look at John twenty eight. I'm gonna turn here in my Bible. This is John chapter. T- I'm sorry, John chapter ten. Verse 28. Amen. I, I want to see if I want to read. Yeah. I want to. This is out of ter- we're gonna, This scripture here, this John chapter 10, verse 24. We're going to read down to 28 or, or, or more, whatever. But um, I, I, and I don't want to <laughs> spill the beans. But I think on Sunday, we're going to continue to talk about. Um, identity crisis also, but so <laughs> this this sort of twenty four sort of ties into this. So be, just bear with me, okay? It said, then came the Jews around about him and said to him, How long does thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. And it says twenty five says Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because you have not of my sheep. And as I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Amen. And then it says, I give unto them, talking about his sheep now. He didn't talk about nobody else. He said, I give unto them his sheep. that knows his voice, y'all. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Let's just write that. Let's go back to that scripture. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So, it, like I said before, it's a gift that God that God has given to us because of His Son Jesus Christ. You know, it's a gift. He wants us to live and not die. He said, "My Father, which gave them me." Is greater than all. He's recognized who his father is. He's recognized who his God is. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. In other words, look, you're not able to pluck them out of my hand, but you ain't also able to pluck them out of my father's hand. In verse verse 30, because me and my father are one. And it was at that time now that they began to have a desire to, to try to stone him, but it wasn't time, you know. It wasn't time. And it said, 32 says, Jesus answered them and said, many good works have I served unto you from my father. For which of these works do you, you should stone me? And Jesus answered him saying, for, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou being a man, man makest that self God. Jesus answered him to them, it is not written in your law that I am God, so I'm going on. Amen. 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 But let's stop right there, you know. But uh, the thing is, y'all, we 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 got to realize. He said, "I give you eternal life. I give it to them, those that believe on me. You know, those that receive me. He there, he's given us eternal life. You know, and 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 like I said last week, I think we're in a place that uh, you know we can get distracted by the cares of this world and forget about what the real purpose and the plan that God had for us. He said, they should never perish.'" Neither shall any man pluck them out of out of my hand. The fact that we gotta understand that Jesus, y'all, Jesus is eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let's look at another one. This is coming out of Proverbs. It says, For those who find me, find let me read this again. For those who find me, find life and receive favor from the Lord from the Lord. That's coming out of Proverbs eight and thirty five. So when you find God, you receive favor. You know, what is what considered to be his, his, the favor of the Lord, the, the, the blessings of the Lord. You know, it's not just uh, 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 material things like that. But, no, this is a spiritual thing. It's a change of the heart. 
You know, the fact that he was willing, the fact that Jesus Christ was willing to die for my sins, to die for your sins, that's a that's that's a major piece right there, y'all. To know that Jesus died for us, that he wants us to have life, but not just any life, life more abundantly, life more abundantly. For those who find me, find life. In the Bible, Jesus said, he said, if you seek me, you will find me. If you knock on the door, the doors will be open. You know, all those things are taking place for us and everything. He wants us to, to be a part of him. All those things ties into eternal life, to, to walk with Jesus, to talk with Jesus, and to be with Jesus, to be a part of who Jesus is. You know, without Jesus, the, the world in itself cannot be saved. He said, no, man, you, we can't go to the Father unless we come through him. Amen. Okay, uh, this is coming from First Peter uh, chapter 5, verse 10. It says, and the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will him restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. He said, he, he, we have been called to into his eternal glory, you know. And that's what he wants. When, when when we talk about eternal life, we talk about the eternal life because God is He is. But they are Alpha and Omega. They're beginning, to the end. They never, ever, ever. They always was and always be. But we are the one that are on the timetable. You know, we are the one that have to go through life and death. But through Him, through Jesus Christ, we will always have life. You know, that's why we. The Bible is saying here that He is calling to. His glory in Christ. Again, getting have eternal life without Christ. Amen. In First John um, chapter two, verse seventeen, it says, "The world and its desires passes away, but whosoever does the will of God lives forever, eternal life." These are the things that we need to we may, may be, we need to hold on to and we need to focus on, you know. We need to become never minded when it comes to the things of God. Because we want that eternal life. We want to we want to be part of that eternal life with Jesus Christ. You know, you know, we want to be able to get to a place where we can see hear him say, Well done, my good and faithful said. We want to see his face. You know, all those other things, whether I see Moses or Abraham, those are good. Yeah, but I really want to see Jesus. <laughs> I really want to see Jesus. I really want to see the glory of God. You know, in the, in the uh, we talked about this last week in the um, Old Testament, when Moses asked God to show him his glory, but God told Moses, look, I can't show you my glory, because if I show you my glory, then you'll die. But I'll turn, and I'll walk past the mountain, and I'll put you in the cliff, and then when you see, you'll see the backside. But here, y'all, eternal life, we're going to see God face to face. We see the Creator. We see the Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah <laughs> El Shaddai. All of those things, those words that we use, we'll see him face to face. We'll see him face to face. And um, this is another one. This is coming out of uh, John, uh, our favorite scripture is John three sixteen says, "For God so loved the world that he would give, he gave his son, and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but do what have eternal life." There's a belief that has to take place in in the, in the Son of the Living God. We can't have eternal life without having Jesus talking about Jesus. They are interrelated. Like I said earlier, Jesus is the eternal life. He's the resurrection. Of the dead, he's all of those things. In Second um, Corinthians chapter four, verse seventeen, it says, "For our light and a, and a momentary troubles are achieving, uh, achieving for us an eternal glory that far away them all." Oh, let me let's turn to that scripture because I want to read some more of that. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter four, Amen, um, verse uh, seventeen. So let's go there real quick and let's. See what we got here. Amen. We're going to see what we got here. Because I think I'm reading it in a, in a different version. Okay. But, um, oh, yes. This is this it right here. This here. Let's, let's start uh, uh, in verse, uh, oh, man, I don't know, Roy. You might have to, 
Right, you might have to read all of this. This is coming out of Second Corinthians chapter four. We're gonna start at the uh, first verse, and we're gonna read all the way down because there's a lot of lot of words in here, a lot of a message in here for us. So therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. You know. So therefore, see, we have this ministry. What ministry? The ministry of Jesus Christ. What ministry? The ministry, the, ministry, the calling, the love, the, you know, the understanding, the, the work uh, and everything. Everything God has equipped us to do. We have received this main recipe right now. In other words, don't be weary in well-doing. You know, keep focused on what it, why we're doing what we do. We want to see the master slaves. We want to have eternal life. You know, we want to we, we want to match the patterns in heaven that have been ordained for us here on earth and everything whatever you know we want to be like that it says but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness not handling the word of god deceitfully but the but by manifestation of truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of god in other words look look we'll be in truth you know everything we do is in truth there's no hidden agenda there's never had had to be you had to reach out the people of God, you ain't robbing the church, you ain't doing all that. But you you you're not trying to be crafty, you know, you're not you know, you're not you're not trying to um change the word of God to, to something that's just to fit what you needed to fit at that time, you know, handling the word to seek the God deceitfully, you know, trying to fool somebody. You're not trying to do none of that stuff. But you just been as transparent as you can so that the, the the kingdom of the word the kingdom of God can live through you, which is the word of God to can bring life in you. So people may, might see you, might not might see you, but they may see Jesus Christ more so than anything. Amen. Says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid from them, them that are left, lost. You know, I like that. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You know, if if all this word be in you and all this word me and me and we don't share it with anybody and stuff, who I mean, how but what soul is gonna be saved? You know, you know, how so anyone can know that Jesus is the healer and no one ever tell them that Jesus is a healer. How they gonna know unless uh, you know even your testimony if you don't tell them your testimony? You know we can't. This is a, something that I truly believe that we can't hide the gospel. Jeremiah said it was like fire set up in my bones and everything. I got to tell somebody. I got to praise them. I got to worship. I got to share what I've been through. We got to share what we've been through. And again, all these turn go t- ties back to, to dealing with eternal life. This is part of who we are. You know, we are a being that God has called for such a time as this, you know, that we can have life, y'all. But verse 4 says, in whom the, the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. They blind. Remember I said earlier they were dead men walking, you know. the dead men, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants for Jesus' sake. So we don't preach not a, we don't preach about ourselves. We don't preach our egos and all our accomplishments. We, we have to get to a place that we go and we preach the gospel. We preach Christ Jesus, the resurrected Savior. You know, we preach Christ Jesus, the Lord. We preach Christ Jesus, our friend. We preach Christ Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know, we preach that, yeah. We preach Christ Jesus because we not only I want for ourselves to have eternal life, but we want to let others know a dying world also know that even those that have been blinded by this by the gods of this world that they can have life, they can have eternal life also, and it's a gift, it's free, it's like the Holy Spirit and everything like that. You don't have to pay for it, you don't have to do anything. It's there for you. It's there for you. Amen. Amen. Let's continue on. Amen. For Second uh, Corinthians chapter four, verse six says, "For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined into in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ." Let's read it again. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, to shine out of darkness. What kind of what is that? We use it when there's no darkness. When there's darkness, they use it in the light. But this light came forth out of darkness, man. 
and shine into us our heart. Just like what the, 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 the who God was and, and the reverence and his glory and all that kind of stuff. To get light and the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. All for his glory. It says, but we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. He says, but we have this treasure in earth and vessels. We have this treasure in earth. The Holy Spirit dwells in this earth and vessels and everything. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. It ain't about us. It has never about, been about us. You know, uh, egos and I and and all this, but it's, it's about Jesus Christ. We get the outcome of the uh, and the glory of what took place up to the cross. We benefit, you know, we benefit hugely for what was done on the cross. We do, and everything, you know, we we get a, a gift in our hand that's in our life. It's, we are yet not distressed. We are perplexed. But not in despair. It says we are trouble on every side. But we're not in distress. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Why? Because we have Jesus Christ. We have Christ Jesus, the resurrected one. We have him. He's in us. He's part of us in everything. And he the, the promises and the gifts, you know, have are already been laid out for us. You know, it says persecute, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. You know, because our focus, y'all, is still on the, the, the days, the latter days that are coming that are greater than our past. Our focus is on what God is doing. Our focus is on when we reach the glory, we will have eternal. Our focus is on those things. You know, our focus is not on the chaos of this world, not even whether somebody can take our life or um, mess us up or break our heart, but our focus is on Jesus Christ. And even when we face those things, the Holy Spirit is so good to a point that it will bring us back into a relationship that, okay, I know that you're going through a heartbreak or you're going through a very difficult time, but I am the one right now that I promise never to believe you or forsake you, and I will bring you through that too. To persecute but not forsaken, cast down but not destroy. It says, verse ten says, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, the life also of Jesus might be made manifested in our bodies. You know, <laughs> eternal life is being manifested in our bodies. Always bearing about the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, everything He suffered when we go through things. And, and of life, because life happens, you live long enough, you're going to go through some things in life. You're going to face some difficult decisions. You're going to face some difficult people. people somebody's going to lie on you. Somebody's going to talk about you. And you know, so you're going to lose a job. You're going to lose a loved one. You're going to get sick. All those things. You might even spend some time in jail. You, know, you may even spend some time in jail. You know. But it says, always bring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I think about all the, the our Savior went through, it's a, that should be an encounter where Jesus did it all for me. He did it all for you so that we can have life. You know, he did it you know, so that we can live and everything. He suffered all those afflictions. He suffered people talking about it. He suffered the nail uh, on the cross. He suffered being nailed to the cross. You know, he suffered the crown of thorns. He <laughs> he suffered all those things for you and me. You know, that's why at the end of it, he said it, it is finished. You know, he was willing at that point, he had did and accomplished everything he had set out to do. So he was willing to give up the ghost. He said, Father, I can into your hands. I commit, commit my spirit unto you. He says, um, verse 11 says, second verse 4 and 11 says, for we which live are always to live unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our, in, in our mortal flesh. You know, the, the, what Jesus did, his death, is made manifest in our, in our mortal flesh. It's made manifest in our mortal flesh because of the working of the Holy Spirit, because of the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's manifest in our flesh because he is eternal life. It's manifested in our flesh, y'all. 
and uh, and everything, and to get to the point that we hold on to those things, and to think on those things, those things that are true of uh, a good report. You know, we think on those things. These are the things that we focus on. These are the things, you know, when, when we do get distracted, we jump back on course and we're like, but, and then we say, but God, you know, you say, but God, you know, yes, I, 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 I'm broken and I'm busted and I'm disgusted. Yes, I lost everything, but God, but God, and then it says, so then death working in us all, but life in you. But well, there, there, death working in us all. When it comes to the fast, death will, but we have life, man. Why? Because we have the Christ. Then it says, we have the same spirit of faith, of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us also by Jesus and shall present us with, and shall present, uh, present, us with you. So all of us are going to be raised by Jesus. The same one that raised the Lord Jesus is going to raise us up too. He says, for all things are for your sake, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many re- redound of the glory of God. You know, everything is taking place, y'all. It's for the glory of God. For the glory. That's what the ages of worship there, you know, because he's God. He's the glory of God. For the for the glory, thanksgiving to the glory of God, you know, that we can live, y'all, and not die. It says, "But which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet our inward man is renewed day by day." And this is what this is all talking about. You know, it's talking about the renewing of the, the inward man day by day. The encouragement, the exhortation of the inward man day by day. Day by day, God is constantly working in us and doing some things in us and stuff like that. The the Holy Spirit is con- constantly moving us and, and changing us and molding us and making us a, into those things that he has ordained for us to be. And he's doing it all for his glory. And the benefit of it for us all is eternal life. For, it says, for which cause we faint not. But through our outward man prayers, yet the inner man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, <laughs> Paul called him, for our light affliction, which is but a moment working for us, a far more exceeding, exceeding and eternal weight of glory. These things that we face in our life, y'all, it's a light affliction when it comes to eternal life for Jesus Christ. You know, they light. You know, it's only a moment. You know, there's only a, what, a dash between the time we're born and the time that we die. It says, while we look at not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are, are not seen are eternal. Everything that we look at, everything, the breath, and the breath that we breathe, the food that we eat, the house that we stay in, the car that we drive, all those things are temporal, man. But the things that we don't see, the things that are God are eternal. You know, they are eternal. They are eternal. Amen. 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 Let's go back to, uh, let's see. That was um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. All right. This was the 2 Corinthians. I, mean, I think we just read it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen since what is seen is temporary and what is unseen is there. That's the new NIV version, okay? But it says, um, let's go to First uh, John chapter 5. It says, uh, verse 13, it says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Eternal life is all in the Bible. Eternal life, y'all. Um, he wants us to have eternal life. He said, write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of, Son, Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. You believe in the Son of God? Guess what? You know? And I'm not just talking about the lips, but I'm talking about with the heart. You know, I'm talking about with the body, with the mind and the soul. They're, you know, that the changing that have taken place and you believe, you know, in the Son of God, you have eternal life. And, um, Psalms 133 and Oh, 139, we might have to turn there and we started running out of time. It said, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me, knowing my anxious thoughts. 
See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Yeah, let's turn to that. I want to read the uh, King James Version of that. Okay. Amen. Yeah, Psalms 139 is where we're going. 139. Amen. And 24. Psalms 139. 23. Amen. Yeah, this is another one. Um, amen. Let's read the whole thing. Amen. This is Psalms 139. Amen. We can start at verse 1. It says this. It says, O oh Lord, that has searched me and known me. You know, God knows who we are. It says, Thou knows my down sitting and my uprising. Thou Understand my thought afar off. God knows us, y'all. Thou compasses my path, my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. But there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. You know what I'm going to say before I even say it. The life is kept behind and put it lay thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful. For me, it is high. I cannot attain it. I can't even. I can't even imagine, you know, how powerful and how awesome and the, the God that we we serve. You know, there is no word to describe Him. The angels came over, holy, holy, holy. Our word is hallelujah. <laughs> the highest praise. It says, "Whither I shall go from my spirit, or whither shall I flee from Thy presence? If I ascend into the heaven." Thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even there shall my, thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be the be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee. But the night shining as day, and the darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Yeah, in other words, God doesn't matter how dark it may be, God still sees just like it was light. Amazing. But thou hast possessed my reign, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knows right well. Listen, our soul knows right well. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, that eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in that book all my members were written, which in continuous was fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are that thoughts unto me, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. God's thoughts of us are precious. That's why he was willing, y'all, to give his son. Okay? He said, if, if I say count them, they are more in number than the sand. You know, he was talking about his thought. When I wake, I am still with thee. Surely thou will slay the wicked, O oh God. Depart me from me, therefore, ye blood of men. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thy enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. And I am, I am not, am not I am grieved with those that rise up against thee. I hate them with a perfect hate, you know, and I count them my enemies. The things that God hate, I hate. That's in other words, the things that God loves, I love. You know, there's a zeal that has to take place in everything. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. In other words, lead me of the everlasting of Jesus Christ, God. You know, lead me in the way of the cross. Lead me into the redemption of the of the Jesus that was done for me and was done for you. Lead me to the place that will have everlasting, eternal life. That's where I want to be because the eternal life and everlasting life and everything is in, will be in the presence of our almighty God, our, our omnipotent God. You know, a God of the Alpha and the, and the Omega, uh, uh, the beginning and the and the end. He that has all powers in His hand. He that created 
everything that I am. There is nothing in this earth that God has not created now. Nothing. All those things God has created in us. Amen. All those things. I don't um, know what we're going to finish. It's going to be a short broadcast. There are other scriptures. Uh, uh, this, this, the, I did that. Amen. Amen. I just realized, um, when I, okay, I see what you did. Amen. 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 I want to read this one real quick. I, I just read that. Let me read Matthew um, chapter 7. Amen. Um, Start at the 13 verses. This is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. It's life eternal. Let's read a couple more. Um, this is coming from John 4, 14. But whosoever drink of thee of the water that I should give him should never thirst, but the water that I should give him should be in him, a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Amen. First um, Timothy, okay, we just read that. Let's read it again. First Timothy 6, verse 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on him eternal life, wherein thou also call and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Romans 8 and 18 says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time, they are not worthy to be compared, but the glory should be, will be revealed in us. Oh, man, I love that scripture. He said, I reckon, you know, that the suffering of this present time, you know, of this present time are not worth it to be compared with the glory that should be revealed in us. See, now that's the one I want to go. We know we went short on time. Let me see if I can uh, go that real quick. Amen. 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 Let me, let, yeah, yes, yes. This, so this is going to tie into what we're going to talk about again on Sunday. Amen. Uh, I says, uh, let's start at 16. Amen. But we're going to talk a little bit more about this on Sunday. Okay. Amen. It says, the spirit itself bear uh, witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Okay. This is going to tie into our identity of who we are. That we are the children of God. You know. And if the children, then heirs, and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, it's so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not, not worthy to be compared with the glory issue which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Oh, baby. And so the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing, but the reason of him who subject, subject, subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travailing and pain together until now. And not only they, but also ourselves, which are the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. In other words, the eternal life that we're talking about. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope? But if we hope for what we see not, then do we uh, read it again. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not we are what to pray for, what we should pray for, but for as we are. But the Spirit itself make it intercession for, for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And <laughs> and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, for to them that who are called according to his purpose. There is purpose that I mean, for we whom he did foreknow, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the first one among many brothers. The image of a son, again, you know, when we see Jesus, we always think of eternal life, because that's what he is. He is, he gives us eternal life. It was a gift. He gave him um, us 
himself. It says, Moreover, verse 30 says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Oh, baby. It says that when, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but living him, him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things, y'all? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make an intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? Sword. It is written, for that sake we are killed all the day long, for we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. This is Paul getting really serious right about that. He said, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor age nor principalities nor powers nor things nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, it won't nothing will be able to take the gift that God has given us away away from us. Yeah, nothing. You know, the eternal life that He presents represents the love, the sound, the true love of God that He wants us to live. You know. And he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, so that we can live. You don't have to be a dead man walking. You don't have to just settle. You don't have to do any of those things. But let me offer you grace, the grace of a living God, the grace of a mighty Savior, the one, the grace of the many-breasted one, the grace you know, that will allow you to live and not die. Live even though you might be going through all kinds of craziness. Bring forth a, a peace that passes all understanding. Now, that's what he wants us to do. Amen. Amen and amen. Father God, I thank you for the message of holding on to eternal life. I pray that it be a blessing to those, that, including myself, that has heard this word, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that someone will cry out, what must I do to be saved? I pray even for the backslider, that there will be a return unto you, Lord Jesus. I pray for revival to take place in the church, God. I pray for every apostle, every pastor, every bishop, Lord Jesus, every evangelist, God, every prophet, God. God, every teacher, God, everyone is represented, even with a, whether they be clergy or lay, I lift them all up to you, name by name and soul by soul and spirit by spirit, that you would do something new and fresh in their life, that you would begin to stir up the gifts in them, Lord Jesus. I pray for God that those that don't know you, Lord Jesus, the Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would send ministering angels into their way, that show them a more excellent way. I pray for those that are sick, Lord Lord Jesus, that you will bring forth healing in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, for this country that we live in, God. You are in control, God. And I pray for the, the leaders of the of this world, God. I lift them up to you, Lord Jesus. I lift up the President of the United States here. I lift up every elected officials, God, whether the state, local government, God, or, or federal. I lift them all up to you. And we know that you are already having your way because the enemy and those that do wrong or trying to do wrong can't do nothing unless you allow it, Lord Jesus. I allow us to know the word of prayer to be faithful in prayer and to pray and to seek your face, God, so that the healing of a nation may take place. We do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Again, I want to remind you of His Abound of Grace as every Tuesday at 7 p.m. with Minister Van. Challenge to Change with Pastor Paul Morgan is Wednesday at 7 p.m. Declaring the Finished Work with Reverend Pat Randall is Thursday at 12 noon. Uh, Friday Night Joy, amen. Uh, it's every, you know, Friday at 7 p.m. Bread of Life, amen. It's Sundays at 7 p.m. Our monthly broadcast is Lifeline, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. First Monday at 7 p.m. Adoration is third Monday at 7 p.m. with uh, Minister, Minister Mac. Bold and Beautiful, second Saturday at 10 p.m. 
10 a.m. The Alabaster, which should be tomorrow, amen, is the fourth Saturday at 7 p.m. And don't forget about the Midday Go at Prayer, amen, with Reverend Gwen Dixon at 1 p.m., amen, amen, amen. I want to um, play a, a couple more announcements because I got a, a um, commercials. I got another announcement um, that I have for Apostle Shirley and I want to make sure that I get that in. Amen. Um, so just bear with me. We're going to play some music, and we're just going to be right back in a minute. Amen. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace, with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Rev. Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's Amen. All right, this is what I got. Apostle Shirley, amen. Of course, many of you know has written several books, and she has a new book um, that is coming out. Amen. Uh, amen. Soon, but let me read it. This is an email I get. I, I got, and um, um, this is being held at the loft. Amen. Let me read the email, and then we'll talk about this a little bit more. It says, "We are excited to." It says, "Hello, we are excited to host uh, um, Shirley's Reverend Shirley's birthday bash here at the loft. We ask that you please RS." The P to the event for applying to this email. Okay, that's because we're gonna we're gonna um, have a a, um, a flyer and stuff like that. You can and find out more information about that. It says, uh, yeah, okay, where am I? It says uh, Shirley's birthday bass is also a book signing. It says, and it says see our newest arrivals while we enjoy. Um, you enjoy sip snacks and get head to head styling tips. This will be this is an event that is taking place on Saturday, June the third, from two PM to four PM. It's uh, at the loft in um Gambrios, Maryland. Amen. If you contact with me I will send you more information. Um they have a coupon, amen. I, um not a coupon, but they have twenty percent off twenty dollars twenty dollars off of off your full purchase of a hundred dollars or more, they have that. I also uh, believe that they have uh, um, um, some other things that are going on. Amen. Um, so this is exciting. Reverend Shirley has a new book that's coming out. We'll probably talk a little bit more about that as we get the flyer information. But save the date, Saturday, June um, the third, um, two p.m. to four p.m. at the Loft. Amen. I think it's a women's clothing store. I, I believe and. Um, um, it will be an event. They have a new clothing line that's coming up. So they managed to tie this into Reverend, uh, I mean, Apostle Shirley. Amen. So, amen. But I'm going to uh, try to see if I can share this on our Facebook page. Amen. And um, hopefully we can do that. Amen. But stay tuned. Amen. We're going to bring you, hopefully, we'll have more information. Um, on on Sunday to give you um, about Apostle Shirley's new book coming out. She has several books coming out. Yeah, the woman is very busy, so we are grateful to her being a part of When Christian Speed Talk Radio. But we can go ahead and get out of here. I hope you have a blessed rest of the afternoon. Be blessed. This has been <laughs> this has been When Christian Speed Bread of Life. Amen. Uh, uh, Supposed to be Friday night joy, but I put bread and light. Amen. But God bless you. Know that I love you and I'm praying for you. Amen. Amen. I can't believe you put bread.